The episode starts in Oslo, where a group of friends are enjoying their time near the sea. As one of them gets ready to dive into the water, he is taken aback by a mysterious light coming from underneath. Soon after, three people emerge from the water, looking terrified. The group immediately rescues the three and contacts the police. On the other hand, we are introduced to Lars Halland, a police officer, and his wife, who have recently purchased a new apartment in the city center. As soon as Lars signs the purchase agreement, he gets information about the incident in the sea and proceeds to the scene. Upon reaching there, Lars notices that the victims are cold, so he gives them some warm blankets. He also believes the victims are Icelandic, so he summons for a translator, only to discover that they speak Old Norse. When the translator asks where they have come from, they reply that they're from the past. Hearing this, Lars believes that the victims are mentally ill, but when he turns on the television, he sees the news about the same incident happening all over the world. Following this, the scene fast forwards a few years, where Lars wakes up in his apartment. A radio in the background reports that the Beforeiners have become a common phenomenon throughout the world. Beforeiners are people from different time periods who suddenly appear in the 21st century. Just last year, over 13,000 of these cases were reported by the BBC. Meanwhile, Lars appears to be taking a secret medicine in the form of eye drops. He is also revealed to be divorced, and his wife Marie now has a new husband named Greg. Gregors. Lars's daughter, Ingrid, lives with her mother, but she pays him frequent visits. One day, Lars learns of a female beforeiner who is washed up dead on the shore of Tulholmen. He, along with his team, arrives at the scene immediately and registers the body in their database before contacting the ambulance. The body appears to be the year's 12th floater. While investigating the body, Lars notices a prehistoric tattoo on her neck and petechia on her hip, as well as on her eyelids. The case appears to be different because the forensic believes the cause of death is strangulation rather than a regular drowning. In the police station, the head officer, Harold, hires a police officer with a multi-temporal background named F. Hildir Engenstatir. Later, the chief summons Lars and Harold to discuss the appointment of a senior detective to handle the ongoing beforeiner death investigation. Lars decides to take the lead on the investigation, but Harold refuses because he is currently on sick leave for chronic drowsiness. Furthermore, beforeiner cases have already been heavily criticized and they cannot afford to appoint the senior detective who is on sick leave. After a bit of thinking, the chief comes up with an idea to pair Lars with F. Hilder. Lars believes that F. Hilder has recently joined and is thus unqualified for the case, but he is powerless to change the chief's decision. Soon after, Lars and F. Hilder go to the port police station to find out who arrived with the victim having the prehistoric tattoo. Upon reaching there, they meet with officers, Jep and David, and ask them if the victim was part of a group, to which they respond to no. Jep suggests they go inside the port for further investigation, so they head there and meet with the other arrivals. After a bit of talking, Lars displays the dead girl's photograph and inquires if they have any information about her. One of the victims recognizes her and confesses to seeing her in the water. She also claims that Hafgufa, a sea monster with glowing eyes, tried to capture her. Hearing this, Afhilder believes her description, but Lars does not. At night, Lars goes to a suspicious slaughterhouse and gets his eye drops. After returning home, he investigates the Chufholman case, while Afhilder contacts him to inform him of the Hafgufa theory. If I am butchering all of these words, I am so sorry. Although he still doesn't believe in the theory, he asks her to prepare everything she finds on Hafgufa and present it to the team the following day. On the other hand, Ingrid intends to visit Rusbus, a traditional Norwegian high school celebration, but Marie and Gregors forbid her, claiming that she is still a minor. The following day at the police station, F. Hilder shows a picture of the sea monster to the team, which makes everyone laugh. Harold then suggests that she stick to the present scientific world. Later, F. Hilder discovers that a man named Tor Hund, whom she has been looking for for a long time, is in a restaurant, so she rushes there alone. Lars notices her departure and follows her. After a while, F. Hilder approaches Tor and inquires whether he recognizes her. When Tor declines, she reminds him of the time that they met. One thousand and seven years ago, and when he forced himself on her in a pig pen. Saying this much, Afhilder starts attacking him. Shortly after, Lars arrives and pulls her back, prompting Tor to flee. He then threatens to report her to higher authorities, as the police department cannot keep a person who is out of control. Hearing this, Afhilder reveals that she knows about his secret medications and addresses him as a temp addict, leaving Lars speechless. The same night, Lars returns home and finds Ingrid on the balcony. He asks 
asks why she isn't with her mom, to which she replies that her mother has forbidden her from participating in Rust Bus because the cover name is too crude. After learning about this, Lars agrees to provide her with the funds she requires, allowing her to take part in it. Elsewhere, we see two men in a boat, capturing a woman who emerges from the middle of the sea after a flash. The scene then shifts to the year 1031 at the Finsmark Vida Plateau, where Afhilder approaches a small tent in search of Tor. Upon entering the tent, she notices a blind elderly woman sitting beside a fire. Afhilder questions her about Tor's whereabouts, to which she responds that he once arrived in search of the lake with multiple lights. Afhilder then asks Tor's precise location, claiming that he is everything to her. The old woman chuckles and says that Tor is a ladies' man and that she is not the first one to look for him. Him. Following that, the elderly woman picks up a tool, slices Afhilder's palm, sips her blood, and begins her occult ritual. After a while, she reveals that Tor is in a place where houses are as tall as mountains and cities shine like stars. Back in the present, Lars, who is at home, discovers that the image of the sea monster is strikingly similar to that of a fishing trawl bag. Just then, a boy rushes to his door, seeking help for his father. Lars goes outside to check and sees the boy's father being hung on the stairway well by several men. Wasting no time, he rushes to stop the men, and as soon as they realize that Lars is a cop, they flee the scene. After saving the boy's father, Lars inquires about those men, to which he replies that they are bohemians who claim sole authority over drop selling. Lars doesn't understand any of this, since the man is from a prehistoric time. The next day at the police station, Lars informs Alfhilder that the picture of the sea monster looks like a trawl bag. He believes that the victim's hip bruises are caused by the trawl bag. He then instructs her to print all trawl sales and look for buyers who aren't in the industry. After a while, he comes across a buyer company named Cro-Magnon Security. Elsewhere, we see a nude man named Navin who is hunting a bunny in the woods. After the hunt, he returns home and cracks jokes with his wife. Navin then heads to the kitchen and eats the raw bunny. Ew. A few moments later, the same two men from the boat arrive at Navin's house and start discussing about the beforeen girls they captured from the sea. Here, it is revealed that the men work for Navin. After a bit of discussion, Navin directs them to hide the girls in the Hovidoya barracks. Meanwhile, Lars informs his co-worker, Alex, about the video footage which was recorded near Hovidoya on the night of the murder. He also asks that Alex locate additional footage from the same website. Just then, Marie and Gregors approach Lars and confront him about allowing Ingrid to participate in Rustbus. Marie believes that he has severely breached the trust and decides to file a case against him. On the on the other hand, Alf Hilder receives a call from the National Gallery informing her that the person in custody is willing to speak with her. She then goes to the National Gallery, where she notices a woman being handcuffed by security. The woman is revealed to be none other than Alf Hilder's elder sister. Alf Hilder inquires about the reason for her arrest, to which she responds that she ripped a false drawing of Tor worth thousands of dollars. Expectedly, this upsets Alf Hilder, and she refuses to release her sister, but the latter reminds her of her past when she saved her in Bjarmaland. Because of this, Alfhilder approaches the gallery owners and persuades them to withdraw their complaint, claiming that the woman in custody is intending to sue for PTSD triggering. Soon after, the two sisters go to a bar to celebrate their reunion. At home, Lars is watching the CCTV footage of Hovodea that Alex sent him. A few moments later, the man, whom he rescued earlier, arrives at his place with various foods as a token of gratitude. Looks like a smorgasbord. Lars invites the man and his son inside and converses with them. He inquires about the man's wife, to which he responds that she died on the way to the city, causing him to become emotional. Being the kind person that he is, Lars tries to console the man and even addresses him as a friend. This makes the man happy, as no one has ever called him a friend before. During their conversation, Lars notices a tattoo on the man's hand and inquires about it. The man simply responds that it represents the family. Meanwhile, the two sisters proceed to a dance bar but on the way, Alf Hildier notices a Cro-Magnon security van and decides to follow it. The van pulls over to a bar, and Navin's two men enter. Inside, the two men approach the bar owner and demand that all of the girls they supplied be returned. Initially, the owner refuses because his business will suffer without the girls, but the men threaten him with Navin's name, leaving him with no other options. Outside, Alf Hildier secretly photographs the van, the men, and the beforeen girls. The following day at work, Alf Hildier 
later shows those pictures to her team and suspects that the beforeen women captured from the sea are being used as prostitutes and that the murder is connected to it. Following this, Lars and Alfildir begin spying on the van. Elsewhere, Navin's wife throws a business party to celebrate her blogging success. A few moments later, Navin notices the bar owner approaching outside his place and walks out to meet him. The owner demands that the girls be returned or else the Bohemian will take action against him. This enrages Navin and he chokes the bar owner. However, when he notices his wife on the balcony, he lets him go. Meanwhile, Lars and Alfildir notice Navin's men smuggling drugs and the latter asks if they should apprehend them. Lars tells her to wait and the two follow the men to a place where several beforeigner women are apprehended. Taken aback, Lars immediately decides to save the women. The officers then chase after the perpetrators and after a bit of back and forth, the bad guys are finally subdued. While rescuing the victims, Lars notices the exact tattoo on one of the beforeigners that he saw on the man's hand earlier. He tries to ask the woman about the tattoo but she is unable to understand his language. Later, at the police station, Lars interrogates one of Navin's men but he doesn't reveal anything. Lars then summons the man he saved along with his son to the police station and allows them to meet the woman with the same tattoo. The woman appears to be the man's wife and they are all overjoyed to be reunited. At night, Lars is working late in the office and Alfildir joins him. As they watch the video footage, they discover that the deceased girl of Chufholmen appears beside the sea four hours before her death. This shocks the duo as until now, they had believed that the beforeigners only traveled from the past. In the following scene, we see Tor, who has surprisingly become a food delivery man. On his way to his delivery, he is distracted by a woman, causing him to fall off his bicycle. He then goes to a nearby restroom to clean up the ruined food. Simultaneously, a cleaner named Skalg enters and recognizes Tor from the prehistoric world. However, Tor pretends to be unaware of it and walks away. On the other hand, Lars and Alfildir go to the forensic lab, where the forensic expert reveals that the deceased girl is not a prehistorian. Despite her best efforts to appear different, she is a modern woman. Following this, they go to the trans-temporal community, believing that the victim has ties to it. When they arrive, they are asked to leave their electronic devices outside because the residents are allergic to electricity. These guys must be good at cards. Reluctantly, the duo place their laptops and cell phones in a box and enter. While the two are interrogating inside, a young lady retrieves all of the case's information from Lars's laptop. Later, in the police station, the officers learn about Holger, so they decide to apprehend him before he flees. Lars and Alfildir are given pistols in order to catch him. Meanwhile, Holger is preparing to escape by diving into the sea, but just then, the police arrive and arrest him. Following this, he is brought to the police station, where Lars and Alfildir question him about the Chufholmen murder case but he appears to have no idea. Despite this, he tells them about Navin, but before he can elaborate, he falls asleep. After some time, Lars orders Alfildir to keep her gun in the locker. In the process, Alfildir accidentally pulls the trigger, causing the bullet to strike Lars's feet. You've got to be kidding me. With this, he is rushed to the hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, Ingrid is with her friend at home, and the two are enjoying each other's company. Ingrid opens her father's drawer and reveals his secret eye drops, which intrigues her friend. As the two are fooling around, Lars and Alfildir arrive outside, prompting them to quickly put away the eye drops. However, when Ingrid goes to open the door, her friend steals an eye drop bottle secretly. Shortly after, Alfildir prepares food for everyone, and she quickly bonds with Ingrid and her friend. While assisting Lars with the dishes, Alfildir inquires a personal question about the service's stance on intimate relations amongst co-workers. She then reveals that she has been communicating with the harbor cop, Jep. She also claims that they've been sending each other private photos, which surprises Lars. Meanwhile, Ingrid and her friend are staring at them, suspecting that there is something between them. On the other hand, Skalg approaches Alfhildir's sister, Nora, and tells her about Tor. Later, Nora informs Alfhildir of the same, but the latter is skeptical that Tor will be working as a food delivery man. The two sisters then decide to go to his house to verify that it is the person they know. Surprisingly, he appears to be married and has a child. When Tor meets them, he mentions that he is suffering from memory loss, but they remind him of everything, claiming to be Norse women. However, the conversation scares Tor, so he threatens to call the cops, forcing the sisters to leave. After this, Alfhildir learns that her sister has cancer, which breaks her heart. 
However, she persuades Nora to get the treatment and encourages her to fight it, claiming that they are shield maidens and are born to fight. The following day at work, Alfildir informs Lars that seven people in Oslo are registered as Navin, but one of them is a wealthy prehistorian who lives with his wife in a large house in Holmenkollen. She also discloses that the two men they apprehended on the island work for Navin. They then go to Navin's house and inquire if he knows anything about the two men they have arrested. As expected, he lies and says no. Lars knows that he is lying, but he lacks evidence to back up his claim, and as a result, they leave. Meanwhile, the same young lady who stole data from Lars's laptop is seen spying on them from afar. As soon as they are gone, the lady approaches Navin and reveals that she knows the woman his men fished out of the sea. She attempts to blackmail him in exchange for information, but he just goddamn chokes her. Surprisingly, she manages to counterattack him, saying that the jungle is not as simple as he believes. Before leaving, she says that she will suggest a safer meeting place for conversation. The next day, Lars visits Ingrid's school to discuss Marie's disagreement about Ingrid's graduation celebration. He wants his daughter to have a normal graduation. Ingrid also sides with her father, allowing Lars to win the discussion. Gregors, to their surprise, appears to agree with Lars' statement. On the other hand, Nora meets with Tor once more, but the latter is still uninterested in speaking with her. As soon as he leaves, she notices an unknown car following Tor and learns that he is in danger. Soon after, she summons Elfhildir, and the two sisters set out for Tor. Meanwhile, the men in the unknown car leave lead Tor into an empty basement parking lot and smack him with a rod. Tor asks who they are, and they respond that they are Olaf the Stout's men. They are about to finish off Tor, but he begs them not to do so. Tired of his whining, the men decide to run him over instead. As Tor lies on the floor, crying, he starts remembering his past as a mighty warrior. Because of this, he gets up with vengeance on his mind and beats up the two thugs, causing them to flee. Soon, the two sisters approach him, who asks them to provide more information on Tor Hund. Hearing this, the sisters finally realize that Tor has actually lost his memory. At the police station, the women from the trans-temporal community arrive with a man who recognizes the deceased woman. He claims that the woman came to his styling studio to get her makeup done as she wanted to look like a prehistorian. The man further reveals that some days after her death, a man by the name of Navin called him and inquired about the woman. In the final scene, we see Navin on one of his usual hunting trips. As he is after a rabbit, a drone suddenly arrives and shoots him to death. Special delivery, bitch. To see what happens next, watch the second part in series recapped.